Have you ever wondered how some pastors are able to draw so many profound points from the Word of God? Have you ever asked yourself, how do they have the whole Bible practically memorized? Well, stay tuned to find out about a unique system that you can implement that will help you see the Bible like never before. My name is Jason Bradley, and you're watching Urban Report. Hello and welcome to Urban Report. My guest today is Pastor Ivor Myers, speaker and director of Power of the Lamb Ministries, and he is also the co-host of Dare to Dream Network Salvation in Symbols and Signs. Welcome to Urban Report, Pastor Myers. Thank you. It's good to be on, and um, mm -hmm. thank you for having me. You're welcome, and it's great to have you on. I wish you were actually here with me in the studio, but, you know, with all this social distancing and stuff, you're... Out there in Cali. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. We're, li we're living in a different world. That's right. Living the quarantine dream, as they call it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people see you as Pastor Ivor Myers, but they, they don't know your history. Like, have you always been a theologian? Uh, no. Um, you know, before I became... Uh, before I became a Christian, actually, I was in the uh, music industry, mm -hmm. um, and uh, on my way, well, actually, we had um, signed a, a multi-album, um, eight-album contract with EMI Records, mm -hmm. uh, had begun recording our first album, um, was on Soul Train, MTV, all of that, doing the whole thing, wow. and uh, that's when... I was introduced to the gospel, uh, and it made a, just made a profound uh, impact on my life. And I left that all behind and basically uh, entered, uh, didn't think I was going to become a pastor, uh -huh. but gave my life to the Lord and decided, Lord, whatever you want me to do, that I'll do for you. And this Amen. passion, this burning desire in my, in my heart, excuse me, to uh, share the gospel just, uh, you know, could not be quenched. And that's how I ended up, um, you know, in the ministry. Got you. So now, that's kind of the, there's the long and short of the story. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the juice down version, if you will. The juice down version. <laughs> yes. Now, how were you introduced to the gospel? So um, we were... Uh, when we got our record deal, we were all living in New York, um, four-man group, but we had a whole group of friends and entourage with us, and um, we had an interest in things like the New World Order, and our mm -hmm. unique angle was we were coming from the Bible um, as conscientious rappers, but we didn't even really know what the Bible said. That was just our our angle that we were using you know, our gimmick, if you will. I don't gotcha. want to call it a gimmick, but we, you know, kind of like that's going to be our unique thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a friend of a friend of ours um, came to our house one night. This friend invited him to our house. We didn't know who he was. Um, didn't know that he happened to be a, a Seventh-day Adventist and um, invited us to his home. I'm sorry. He invited us. <laughs> I'm sorry. He was invited to our home. <laughs> got you, got you, got you. That's what uh -huh. happens when you're on lockdown, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's Starts right. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, so uh, he, he came to our house. Uh, we were all hanging out, you know, um, doing our thing. And we ended up getting into this religious discussion specifically about the mark of the beast. Hmm. And uh, we had no, no real clue about what that was. And this guy just started to break down. Uh, and it was really an impromptu discussion. Wow. He begins to break down the Bible to us and um, break down Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 7, the prophecies speaking about the end times. Mm -hmm. We had never heard anything like it. 
it just kind of revolutionized everything for me, particularly in that one night. Wow. Wow. So in that just one night, it just changed. Everything. Yeah. 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 That's incredible. Yeah. So now, yeah. now you've been walking with the Lord for uh, how, how many years? Uh, it's been 20, uh, 25 years now. Wow. Wow, and twenty-five years, and you've you've implemented uh, a program or a system called photo theology. Uh, what is right. photo theology? So, uh, photo theology is um, it's a term that I have coined, mm -hmm. uh, and it basically means the study of God or the study of the Bible through the use of images or pictures. Okay. So you've heard the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. Mm -hmm. um, I take that principle and apply it to the scriptures. So basically in this system, you are learning to study the Bible by studying it in pictures, in images. Okay. Uh, when I was younger, there was a card game that I used to play called Concentration. Mm -hmm. And you may be familiar with that game. You had all the cards facing downward. And you had to basically remember where that you flipped the card and then you would have to remember where the matching card was. Yes. So it was a memory game. Um, but that principle is basically what I took into the scriptures. Now, I didn't know that I was doing this at the time. Mm -hmm. right? I didn't mm -hmm. understand when I came into the, in, into the church um, I didn't necessarily have anyone teaching me how to study the Bible, so I had to learn on my own, basically. Yes. Um, I learned through reading books. I learned uh, by listening to other preachers, and I was always interested in, you know, I guess I was interested in how, how you put this thing together. So a, another thing is, as a former rapper— Uh-huh. Right, you were always trying to find a unique way of saying the same thing. Yes. You didn't want to say something the way someone else said it. So I think subconsciously I kind of took that principle into my Bible study. Gotcha. I would, you know, see a truth and and my mind would just automatically kind of ask, Well, how else can I look at this? Mm -hmm. How else can I present this? Mm -hmm. And um, so all of that kind of led to this system which what, what would happen is people would ask me, hey, how do you study the Bible like that? How did you come up with that? How did you find that? Because I've been looking at the Bible for, you know, this long and I didn't see that. I've and asked I you had that. to like kind of, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I kind of had to like stop for a minute and say, okay, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. how am I doing this? And in studying the way that I studied, that is what, how photo theology came about. Wow, okay. Right, it was, okay, this is how I'm studying. This is how I'm breaking it down. So then I took that principle and basically began to share with others. And so photo theology has evolved into an entire system. Hmm. So I think we've done an interview on this once before, a couple of years back. Um, mm -hmm. It has evolved since then, and I'll share a little bit more about that um, you know, later on in the program. But in a nutshell, that's photo theology, gotcha. right? It's learning to study the Bible through images because we remember pictures a lot easier than we remember words. Yes. So that's kind of the idea behind it. And so is that how you teach uh, how to memorize the themes? So one of the things that we have just, uh, that I've just started uh, teaching to my students mm -hmm. is how to memorize the Bible. So when I say that, how to memorize the Bible, um, people, you know, typically like memorize the Bible. What are you talking about? I mean, <laughs> yeah. you need to have like a photographic memory to do that. <laughs> um, and what I share with people is that you do have a photographic memory. Hmm. They're like, nah. So I, I, I've given a challenge and I'm actually taking my students through this now. And it is to memorize the themes of the Bible. Mm -hmm. So instead of memorizing words, we're memorizing pictures. Okay. And, um, and basically I'm, I'm saying, listen, you can have the whole book of Genesis memorized so that 
if I ask you what's in Genesis 5, you should be able to tell me, oh, Genesis 5 is the genealogy of Adam. Gotcha. Right? That's uh -huh. the goal. So people are like, no, how, how is that even possible? I'm like, you can do this in a week or less. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's kind of what we have been, uh, some of the things I've been teaching my, my students is we're going through uh, 24 chapters at a time. And uh, Jason, I, I've decided that on this program, I'm going to take you through this challenge and show you that you can memorize okay. the first 24 chapters of Genesis. Oh, boy. You look nervous. Now, now, yeah, I am nervous because you, you try and give me pop quizzes on salvation and symbols and signs and stuff all the time. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. all right. Well, well, take me through the system. All right. So, basically what we, and I'm going to explain a little bit more about this uh, um, a little bit later on, but let me just start with this now. Mm -hmm. I want you to imagine. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me go back to the to photo theology for a second. So in this system of phototheology, um, we have a palace. We, I call it a phototheology palace. Okay. Your phototheology palace has 24 rooms. Okay. So imagine a palace in your mind, and in this palace, there are 24 rooms. Hmm. These 24 rooms represent 24 different principles hmm. in phototheology. Okay. Right? So each room is a different study room. Okay. So for example, there's the dimensions room. Mm -hmm. In the dimensions room, um, there are five dimensions. Mm -hmm. The literal dimension, the Christ dimension, the me dimension, the church dimension, and the heavenly dimension. These five dimensions are different ways in which you can read the Bible. I'm coming back to the memory thing, wow. so just, just hold that thought. Okay. Most people, so let me give you an example, the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. In the literal dimension, God said, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Mm -hmm. That's the literal dimension. A literal sanctuary was made and the presence of God was in the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. In the second dimension, Christ said, destroy this temple and I'll raise it again in three days. Mm. That's the second dimension. Christ is the temple yes. and the presence of God dwelt in him. Amen. Uh -huh. The third dimension is the me dimension. Okay. Know you not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Wow. And the presence of, or the Spirit of God dwells in you. Uh -huh. So in the third dimension, the temple is pointing to me. Wow. In the fourth dimension, it's the church. Uh -huh. Right? Uh -huh. We are all lively stones that are brought together to form the house of God or the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And the presence of God dwells in the church. Uh -huh. The fifth dimension is the heavenly dimension. Okay. There is a literal sanctuary in heaven and the presence of God is literally there. Wow. Okay? Uh huh. That's just one room out of 24. <laughs> wow. I could spend an yeah. eternity in this palace. You, you can spend, most people when they read the Bible are only reading it in two dimensions. Hmm. The literal dimension, uh -huh. what does this literally mean? And the me dimension, how does it relate to me? Yep, that's that right? is very true. In doing true. that, you're missing out. In other words, this is what I say. You can read through the entire Bible through the first dimension and then go back and read through the entire Bible in the second dimension. How do these stories relate to Christ? Then the third dimension, how does it relate to me? Then the fourth dimension, how does it relate to church? And then the fifth dimension, how does this story relate to heaven? Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Again, most people only reading the Bible are only reading the Bible in two dimensions out of five. Wow. That's just one room. Yes. That's just one room. Yes. If you only had that room, mm -hmm. you have everything you need. <laughs> wow. But right? we have but, but we have twenty three more room. to go. We have twenty three more rooms we to have go to. Absolutely. So you can take a text, mm -hmm. go into the dimensions room come out with five different ways you can look at that text and then take that text over to the next room. All right, let's go to the concentration room. Okay. Or let's go to the connect six room. Or let's go to the time room. Uh-huh. And now you're being able to, you catch what I'm saying. You're, yep. you're able to funnel this one text to 24 different rooms if you want to. Hmm. Now, what's the questions room? All right. The, okay. 
So there's the questions room, uh -huh. the questions room, and I think we may have, I don't know if we talked about this before, but the questions room is very, it's very profound and yet it's very simple. Okay. In the questions room, you're basically learning to ask the text questions. Mm -hmm. Most of us read the Bible, and the only question we ask when we get to a text is, what does this mean? Answer, I don't know, and we keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's uh -huh. what we want to do. <clears throat> we want to learn how to investigate the text. So I challenge my students, when you get to a verse, mm -hmm. you want to try to ask that verse as many questions as possible. So I've challenged my students to try to come up with 50 to 100 questions on any given text. Okay, so, so let me uh, reverse this little, little quiz thing here. So Jesus mm -hmm. wept. Give me some questions for Jesus All wept. Right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a story with you. Okay. I'm not even going to give you the questions. <laughs> okay. Let me just share a story with you. Gotcha. Now, you brought this up just randomly? Yes. Okay. When I first, this is about 20, 20, 21 years ago, mm -hmm. I met a guy who asked me, he wanted to know how to study the Bible. So the first principle that I ever applied was a question principle. At that time, I wasn't calling it the question room. I just said, hey, one of the key things you want to do is ask the text questions. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you an assignment. And your assignment is to f take the shortest text in the Bible. <laughs> oh, wow. Jesus wept. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to ask that text as many questions as you. I'm, I'm just laughing wow. that you brought that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ask that as many questions as you can. Wow. This brother... This brother, I'm not even going to mention his name, but he's now he's a, a, he's a, he's known in Adventist circles. Yeah. This brother came up with three pages of questions for Jesus from West. Jesus West. Wow. Hmm? Yeah. Why was he weeping? Who was he weeping for? And he just kept going, kept going. Yeah. What does it mean to weep? Hmm. What, why does one weep? I mean, he just kept, and what happened is one question would kind of lead to another question. Yeah. Would kind of lead to another question. Would lead to another question. So when you learn now, now when I challenge my students and I'm pushing them, I'm like, ask more. Mm -hmm. More? Yes, ask more. Mm -hmm. And they'll get to like 50 or 60 questions. And then I say to them, now, the questions you are asking, you are only asking them in the first dimension. Wow. 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 And there's five dimensions. So, and there are five dimensions. Yes. Yes. So now you can, you can ask five times as many of the questions that you, you thought 50 was like, whoa, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to ask that text questions now in the second dimension, now in the third dimension, now in the fourth wow. dimension, now in the fifth dimension. So that's just the question room. Hmm. Okay, so let's go to one of the rooms is the memory room. Okay. And that's where we are right now. Gotcha. All right. Mm -hmm. So I kind of diverge a little bit, but I'm coming back to the memory room. Okay. And um, let me mention this as well. So the Phototheology Palace has six floors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Each floor, th these six floors, the 24 rooms are divided among these six floors. Okay. The first floor, that's where the memory room is. And the okay. reason why this is important to understand is because you have to have a deck of cards if you're going to play the game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Come on now. I see if what you're doing. Uh -huh. See what I'm saying? Yeah. If you don't have the stories, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. At a foundational level, if you don't have the story, so one of my favorite ones, you know, playing the concentration game. Yeah. Moses goes on top of the mountain. He's stretches. I've shared this with you before many times on three. He uh -huh. stretches out his hands. Yeah. Um, when his hands are lifted up, there's victory. When they come down, no victory. His hands go up. They begin to get tired. Aaron stands on one side. Her stands on the other side. 
They're holding up his hands. Mm -hmm. That is a picture. That's a match. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. We flip that card. Huh? How does this story remind me of Jesus? Ah, Jesus on the cross, his hands extended with two thieves on a thief on, on either side of him. Yeah. It's the the sinner that held his hands up, wow. not the nails. Wow. Okay. Yeah. In order yeah. for me to have made that connection, I would have had to have that picture mm -hmm. on ground level. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So the first floor is all about furnishing your palace. Hmm. If you don't have okay. stories locked in your mind, mm -hmm. right? If you don't have, like, and I say, how, how are you going to get these stories? Read the Bible. Yep. Listen to your story hour. Like, whatever you need to do. <laughs> Watch Dare to Dream. Uh-huh. That's right. Ab absolutely. <laughs> you're right. You're, you're just, uh -huh. You might not understand the stories, of, you know, Samson and David. Well, I mean, Samson and, uh, I'm sorry, David and, and David and Goliath. You know, Samson, Elijah, what are these stories about? I may not understand it. Just get it. When you're moving into a house, mm -hmm. you kind of have stuff all over, right? Nothing's yes. organized. First level, just get the stories in there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why I take people through this memory challenge. Okay. So now, let's get to the memory challenge. In the memory challenge, what we want to do is we want to learn how to memorize the Bible um, 24 chapters at a time. Oh, wow. Okay, let me, 24 chapters let me break that time? down. Yeah. So, Jason, you might know this. Have you heard the, phrase, the term 24 frames per second? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So 24 frames per second means that when you're watching a movie, mm -hmm. right, your, your mind is actually processing 24 still images mm -hmm. every second. Mm -hmm. Those 24 images make up one motion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's the motion, right? So uh -huh. 24, like you take a book, a coloring book, you draw pictures, right? And then you start flipping and the picture starts moving. Yes. 24 frames a second, that's what's happening. So what I'm suggesting is that if we take 24 chapters at a time, mm -hmm. Right? Yep. And for each chapter, we simply take a picture. All right? What's Genesis 1 about? Creation. Right. Uh -huh. Genesis 2, Adam and Eve. Genesis 3, Cain and Abel. I'm sorry, Genesis 3, the fall of man. Uh -huh. Genesis 4, Cain and Abel. Genesis 5, the genealogy of Adam. What happens is, if I take a still image uh -huh. of the summary of each chapter, uh -huh. Uh -huh. right? and I do this 24 chapters at a time, what ends up happening is that I should be able to scan these chapters so rapidly. Mm -hmm. I hope you're following this, right? I'm following. You're scanning mm -hmm. these chapters into a place where you can now juice down what's happening in those 24 chapters in one second. Wow. Wow. Now, yeah, yeah. If you do that, right, so watch this. The first 24 chapters of Genesis, mm -hmm. if you juice it down, it's about division. Now, One word, okay, division. Okay, division. Mm -hmm. Separation so between have, man and God. Yep, yep. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, yeah. Cain and Abel. Uh-huh. The flood. Mm -hmm. um, the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. um, Abraham coming out. Of Ur, wow. um, Hagar and Ishmael, um, Ishmael and Isaac, all of it is separation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'll just juice down the first 24 sets of chapters, the first 24 frames into one word, division. division. Now, wow. if I follow that, there are 1,189 chapters in the Bible. If I break those down by 24, I come up with 50, 24 frame per second sets. Wow, okay. 50. Mm -hmm. Which means if I can juice the first 24 set down into one second, then I should be able to scan the entire theme of the Bible in 50 seconds. Wow. That's incredible. Do you catch what I just <laughs> Yeah. That, I mean, that's incredible. That and listen, incredible. I'm not just talking this, right? Mm -hmm. I have students in my class 
that in a matter of three weeks, they have already done this. In three weeks? Look, I'll, in three weeks, we need, to talk, have, we need to talk about how to even get to where the course is. We only, we only have about two minutes, two and a half minutes left. Um, Are you serious? Yeah. You mean we never is, got to the middle challenge? No, we didn't even get to the pictures. This is juicy, man. This is, this is really good. This is really good. How do people even get to the course? What, what website can they go to? So if they go to powerofthelamb.com mm -hmm. um, and uh, look for the um, photo theology online course, that's how they're going to find the course. Gotcha. Uh -huh. um, if I can just share this, Jason, because I'm really, I'm just like, I can't believe we didn't, we didn't get to the, to the images. But yes. if you connect, like Genesis chapter one, mm -hmm. imagine if you could show that picture real quick, earth with a big one on it. Okay, right? like, let's go to that, that picture. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that image, if you imagine a high rise building mm -hmm. and on each floor, there's an image. You connect the image. So Genesis one, you see a big earth with a number one in it. You're always going to remember on the first floor, Genesis one. Let me jump to Genesis 5. When I get to floor 5 in my, in my Genesis high-rise, the uh -huh. elevator door opens, I see Adam in a pair of jeans. Ah, uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Because Genesis 5 is about the genealogy Got of you. Adam. Got you, uh -huh. So I'm using photos, really kind of like out there photos yeah. to remember. And what people are seeing is that in doing this, they're actually seeing that they have photographic memories. Yes. They remember the image and they're like, oh, Genesis 5, genealogy of Adam. Yeah, yeah, that's Genesis incorrect. 11, <laughs> you got the two ones are the size of the Tower of Babel. Mm. So I'll never forget that Genesis 11 is a Tower of Babel. Yes. And it just goes on like. Wow, that is incredible. I wish we had a, a lot more time. Um, if somebody is just, we have like 40 seconds. If somebody's just, studying the Bible for the first time, where should they start? Well, I would say start on the first floor. Okay. I would say just get these stories into your mind mm -hmm. because that's where the Holy Spirit is going to begin. If you're earnest in your, in your desire for truth, the Holy Spirit will begin to take these stories and bring them to life for you. Yeah. So it doesn't matter really where you start, start. Yeah, just get started. Just get started. Thank That's you right. so much, Pastor Myers. Thank you for your wonderful insight and what you're doing to teach those uh, how to study the Bible. Till next time, God bless.